the one who trusts will never be dismayed. I will make justice the measuring line and righteousness the plumb line. He will sweep away the refuge, the lie and water will overflow your hiding place. Your covenant with death will be annulled. Your agreement with the grave will not stand. When the overwhelming sword sweeps back, you will be beaten down by it. As often as it comes, it will carry you away. Morning after morning, by day and by night, I will sweep. It will sweep too. The understanding of this message will bring sheer terror. The bed is too short to stretch out on. The blanket too narrow to wrap around you. The Lord will raise up. Will the Lord will rise up as he did at Mount Perizim. He will rouse himself as in the valley of Gibeon to do his work, his strange work, and perform his task, his alien task. Now stop your mocking, or your chains will become heavy. The Lord, the Lord Almighty, has told me of the destruction decreed against the whole land. Listen and hear my voice. Pay attention and hear what I say. When the farmer calls for planting, does he grow continually? Does he keep on breaking up the hollow, the, the breaking up and hollowing the soil? When he has leveled the surface, does he not sow carrots and scatter onions? Does he not plant wheat in this place? Valley in this spot and spilt in this field. This God instructs him and teaches him the right way. Harry is not dressed with a sledge, nor is a cut wheel for overcome. Harry is beaten out with a rock and coming with a stick. Grind a green must be ground. To make bread. So one does not go on threshing it forever. Though he drives the leaves of his threshing cart over it, his horses do not grind it. All this also comes from the Lord Almighty, wonderful in counsel and magnificent in worship. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for your word. We ask, O oh God, for understanding, and we ask God to speak to us. Speak to us through your word today, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Hey, we have before us a beautiful text from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 28, and we want to hear what God says to us today. Our topic is the Lord will humble the proud. The Lord will humble the proud. So prophecy has been an integral part in Israel's history and realities. It encompasses moral and divine action, yet it was limited not, it was not limited to the nation of Israel but to all of mankind. Ephraim, the younger of two sons of Joseph, adopted by his grandfather Jacob, was given a preferential blessing, was the progenitor of the tribe called by his name, and so was Manasseh, his senior brother. To leave us separation, the twelve tribes remained intact, and Ephraim grew rapidly and formed a prominent position in Israel. Joshua, Moses' successor, was an Ephraimite. Shalom, a city, uh, a town was in Shalom was a town in Ephraim territory, and the tabernacle was pitched there before the battle of Ebenezer. So, uh, sorry, Samuel, Jeroboam the one, 
were Ephraimites. And Ephraim is synonymous to what we call Israel for the northern kingdom. Now, the land was better. They brought in huge amounts of wealth. They became a wealthy symbol of expression of righteousness leads to wealth. But the story is replete. It rather leads to pride and sensuality, or at best, dullness and stupidity. Yet, in the midst of all this contempt and insolence, God still has a remnant in reserve. God warns, listen and hear my voice, pay attention and hear what I say. God proceeds with questions whose answers are known. When a farmer calls for planting, does he grow continually? Does he keep on breaking up the hollowing of the soil? When he has dealt with the surface, does he not sow calories and scatter crumbs? Does he not plant wheat in his place, barley in his place, in his plot, and split in his field? We have a responding answer that comes to us, and it is yes, God does. Now, if God instructs and teaches me in the right way, that is the farmer, why wouldn't his people follow and obey him? The imagery here in this chapter is so beautiful. Isaiah, you know, talks about power is not stretched with a sledge, nor is the cut we rose over the coming. Power is beaten out with a rod and coming with a stick. Grain must be ground to make bread, so, uh, so one does not go on stretching it forever. Though he drives you know, the wheel of the stretching part over it, his horses will not grind it. All this also comes from the Lord Almighty. Wonderful in counsel and magnificent in wisdom. And this morning, we want to consider this text according to your bulletin on the next five headings that we have. What are the characteristics of the pride? Now, let me refresh our minds again about our topic. Our topic says, the Lord will humble the world, the proud. The Lord will humble the proud. So, what are the characteristics of the proud? First point says, it got on the world. Every time we talk about people being proud, what comes is what? It got on the world. In our text, we see that also with Ephraim. A tribe in Asia, but what? Worthy, having a very fertile soil and a very fertile field. And so reef and fertile body, you know, encompasses economic welfare. But there's a second characteristic that comes from, you know, a person who is proud. He's proud because he has what? Intellectual what? IQ. He thinks that he's what? He's wise and probably he has what? All that it takes to sacrament and make his way to. So, intellectually, he's endowed. And this is what we have in our cities. Most of the time, city income, cities encompass what we call intellectuals and they bring together the arguments that seem to make policies and outline, you know, how people live their life and go about it. But there is also a third, you know, categorization there. It's about aesthetic, oh, beauty, endowment, glorious what? Beauty, verse 1 tells us, glorious what? And today, a lot of people who find themselves in this category look at themselves as what? The epitome of what we can consider as beauty. And so we see this whole idea of beauty being another characteristic of the proud. But then, there's a fourth characteristic that I want to bring. That is social status. A lot of people who are proud are easily giving acceptance amongst people and always wanting to be what? To be known wherever they find themselves. So social status is a very big thing for people who find themselves as what? As being proud. 
But in our, from our text in verse 1, we see the Bible comes to us clearly in the King James Version. It calls it the crown of what? Of crown. The NIV calls it the wreath. And then the RSV calls it the garland. This all refers to a wreath or a robe or a leaf of flower or other materials that are moving together. The materials of the wreath, you know, tells a story, especially in those days, about how wealthy the individual is. And the wreath was designed to somehow say the importance or the wealth that the person has. And some of these wreaths, sometimes they are placed, you know, in front of houses, in front of the doors, especially at Christmas. You see people carry those wreaths, so beautifully designed. But it's all just to de 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 display wealth and to depict how wealthy the person or the individuals are. Now, that wreath is a description. Even stronger are also a specific, you know, designation to the what? To the fading flower. Glorious beauty. It says that, listen, this flower has a what? A limit. It's going to what? Fade. So, the prophet was saying to Ephraim, no matter your wealth, no matter your what? Your, you know, uh, endowment, you are on the way to what? Faith. Soon, so soon, it's going to what? It's going to fade. And we come to the place to see that the city here refers to, refers specifically to the capital of Israel, that is Samaria, and that is the name of, you know, the capital for Israel as the ten tribes that have been separated from the southern kingdom. And we see this happen over and over in our society, that people seem to have the characterization on these, you know, uh, aspects, and that considers them to be proud. What are the categories of the proud? Categories of the proud are simple. When you look at, you know, our text, we see idol worship, we see human worship, we see substance worship, and we see what? Pleasure worship. So the proud man or the proud woman quickly has a category. They quickly get into what we call idol worship, human worship. Always like to what? Worship themselves. Now you know idols are very, very, very much the things we want. We include, right? As Jeremiah will say, we we created them. And the interesting thing is, we bow to them. How sad is it that you create a stake, you cut it out of the tree, and then you make an image out of it, has no eyes, you give it an eye, has no ear, you give it an ear, has no mouth, you give it a mouth, and guess what? You bow to it. And we see a lot of idol worship today in our society. And all the people are worshiping idols. And the idols, the things that they seem to power, to power the eyes. So we have people worship. People like to be worship. And I just think about people who want to be called Ram Kalindi, you know. You know, told that you are the man who will be there forever, you know. And, and, and healed and praised. And we come to the place today where if you can't worship people, you can't get something from them. It's so sad, even in our midst. If you are not ready to bow down, you are not going to get what you are supposed to get. Human worship. But not just human worship, you also see substance worship. People are worshiping substance today. And a lot of times, we worship these substances, and we think they are a place. But you can imagine, you are so proud, you, 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 you have your intellect, but then your intellect becomes an idol. And then instead of worshiping that idol, you expect to be worshipped. And being worshipped, you look for a substance to keep you up. You know, today most of our celebrities, and sad to say, most of our upcoming artists don't get to stay in the taking drugs because they need to perform. And so they go to what? They go to substance. And I pray that as a young man or a young woman growing up, you will not need substance to do what you need to do for God. Hallelujah. 
We need to come to the place to understand that substance in our society is really eating our society up. And so we see not just the substance, but then the people also go to what we call pleasurable work, eternity, pleasure seen to work, to get on the increase, and man seen never to get satisfied, and he wants to try every other thing. But you see, this whole particular, uh, particularization manifests itself in what we call three ways. The first manifestation we see here is what? Money. Go. Money. The second categorization we see is what? Sex. And the third categorization we see is what? Wine. Now it is said, alcohol and substance abuse, if you want to call it drugs, and we want this. was a man's dream. But today, there are more women drinking than men. Now the argument now is not who is drinking more between the Sonic Cardinal women and the Tato women. And so we see, you know, a sad story that women are more getting into what? Into alcoholism. Drugs. I need not tell you about the Kano Saga, the Kodin, no? Okay? Out of a thousand women, 900 were from the Kodin. In the bags, in the far north. And so it becomes an epidemic that is at our hands. Wine is a mocker and beer is a brother. Whoever is led astray by them is not what? Wise. Let your mother's miracle rings out clear. Do not spend your strength on women. Your vigor on those who run kings. Not for kings. Not for kings. Not for kings to drink wine. Not for rulers to crave beer. Give beer to those who are perishing. Amen. And we want to see today, this is what we have in our society. I'm not going to argue with you about whether it's good to drink or not to drink. Scripture is clear. If you are a peculiar people, a peculiar person, set aside, holy unto God, if you are a distinct person, alcohol is a part of your formulation. Amen. So the composition of the power, according to our text, were the priests, were the what? The prophets, were the what? The parents, and the what? The children. The whole society was what? Was into this, you know, idol worship. Very, very boastful, proud. And we come to the place to see that in our society, the children are a copy of the parents. And we are wondering why is our government the way the government is? It's because our wounds are the way the government is. Why has the church changed our society? It's because our wounds have been changed. When we have clear minded priests, when we have, you know, clear minded prophets, when we have people who will speak the word of God to authority with all fear and favor, when we have parents who will stand for the truth, the children will follow in line. Where are the Arabs coming from? Where are the thieves coming from? Our homes. And they bear the names of Peter, John, and Paul. Ironically. But you see, the proud guy has a perception, and that perception is that he has what we call a loud, you know, self-glory. He's always loud in his self-glory, and that perception is what seemingly tries to guide him. And you can imagine a proud man, Isaiah, reaching out to his contemporaries as he said to them, this is what the Lord is expecting of you. And guess what he said? Verse 9. He says, Who is this 
that is trying to what? To teach us. To whom is he explaining his what? His message. Is he talking to what? Is he talking to a baby that is still sucking at the mother's breath? Or is he talking to a baby that has been withdrawn weaned from the mother's breast? You can see how they are now in the what? In the you know, self-glory. I'm an intellectual. I'm beautiful. You know, I, I have social status. Uh, somebody will say, I'm a celebrity, you know, for crying out loud. Why should you go to pay $2,500 for a bottle of food when you can just come around the corner and drink it for $89? I want somebody to know that I have arrived. But you see, the proud man is also what? Boastful. He breaks, you know, and he mocks. And so Isaiah, you know, will say to them, you know, why are you breaking? You boast. You have entered into a covenant with what? With death. Now you know there are some people. I met a man when I was going to you, and I went on evangelism, and I, I, I met a man, an old man, 69 years old, and I tried to witness to him. He listened to me very carefully, and then he started to ask questions, and he led to us talking, and all of a sudden, he said to me, because I had said to him, Daddy, you know, alcohol isn't good for you. Because as I was witnessing to him, his bottle was by his side. And he was taking his head. Okay? And when I said, this is not good for your health. And he looked at me and I said, I'm 69. That's how I got to know his age. And what's your age? Yeah, I think age of a small boy. You can tell me what to do. I have been doing this for a long time. And you know, he played it so You meet a young lady and you try to say, young woman, the road you are going is wrong. Take your time and say, hey, it's not your business. It's my life. I have to do what I want to do with it. Keep your talk on that side. Who are you, by the way? The young man, when you meet him and say, young man, you are going the wrong way and you're going down the road, he tells you, I know what I'm doing. I'm smart. I have calculated how I will do it, you know, and I will get my way around. The bride and the apostle. The truth about the proud is that they not only brag and book, but they stuff, you know, they are considered that they are haughty. They, 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 they turn they turn their backs on God, you know. And they come to the place to say, verse 10 will say, Who are you to tell us do? And do, do, and do. How about we are tired with you? Rule upon rule, rule on rule. A little here, a little there. No, don't teach us what to do. We know what to do. The young people say, We know where we are going, we know what we want to get. And, and, and you know, I, 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 I know what I want to do. Yes, I know, I can get it. And most certainly, you will agree with me. When they hit the rock, they come back like a dog who buries the tail go, and then they can't talk. But you know what? You say to yourself, ah, I'm a big guy. I'm a big girl. I know what to do. Yeah. I had an encounter with one of my students. Another lecturer has quoted the student, and the student comes to me and tells me, you, 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 you lecturers think we are kids in this place. We know what we are doing. You know? We have big old, you know, we have rich of age that we can make our decisions. What was the argument? She was befriending an unchristian boy, but she felt that was God's way. And a year after, the guy was gone. You understand, right? The guy was what? Was gone. And then I meet her and ask her, that's your boyfriend. And she says, sir, don't, don't, don't do that to me. And I said, what? Are you not together again? She said, he's gone his way since. 
Then I said, I'm a big girl. I know what I'm doing. Ultimately. And you know what the scripture says? God said to them, very well, since you know what to do, since you understand what to do, I'm going to bring a people of a different tongue that will speak their language to you and put you under that subjection, verse 11. They will speak to you in a foreign language. I will bring the Assyrians that will deal with you, bring you under subjection, bring you to the point where you will come to understand. Most of the time, we really never get to understand the lesson. But God is saying, look, listen, I have given you this land because it was supposed to be a place of rest for you. It was not supposed to be a place of what? Of prestige and pride. I have given you beauty. It's not because I want you to kill for your beauty. You know, nowadays, our young ladies, they are dressing to kill people. Not that they ask you to kill somebody or slay somebody. That's the next one that you slay, you know? Oh yeah, you have swag. But God was saying to you, I was giving you to bring you to a place of rest. I was bringing you to a place where you will not have trouble. You will not have contention. But today, I, 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 our word just asks that you must use whatever endowment you have so that you can give what you don't have. That is in God's way. God has given you everything for living righteousness and even good life. Amen. God created you and He knew that you needed good life. So He made a provision for you. If you walk in His way, your life will be good. Hallelujah. But you see, today in our society, a lot of things crop up and a lot of people become proud, conceited, you know, they scoff at God. Who is this God? Who is this mocking us? Who is this talking to us? What can you do? What will you say? And God says, listen, I will now match your judgment. I will match you for what? For everything you have done. Do and do. Do and what? And do. Rule and come back. Rule. I will give you back feet for what? Tax. I'm going to hold you accountable. And Israel was saying, ah, oh, you know, we are powerful, we have strength, we have might, we are worthy, we can buy our way around, and we can find ourselves out of it. But not only really that, listen, <coughs> you know, I, 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 I listen to a young guy say, hot, hot drink, go, you know the what, you know the game. Have you heard that before? And so you get what he does. He drinks very hot gin, hot milk. And he tells you if you have a little, you are wasting time. Take one shot, give it a shot, you sweat, the Madeira is gone. And, 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 guess, and guess what, you know, they said. They said, let you know, we have signed an agreement with what? With death. And I have heard you will let you the boast in my presence. This thing doesn't kill me. I have done it for a long time. I, I know what to do. We have signed what? Agreement with what? With death. We have what? We have made, you know, a covenant with what? With the grave. They will kill me. You know, I will continue to do it. You can imagine. Who right? It's really deceiving us today. A young man on, 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 on Facebook just uh, last week, you know, hacked into somebody's account and sent in a message. There is a new, you know, uh, Ponzi scheme that is going on, and I just played. I paid in fifty thousand and I got hundred thousand. Wouldn't you mind, you know, to, to 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 play? And this guy is my student. But my student knows my position about all these courses in Padama and the rest of them. I never go near them. You know, wealth, money, I the hope. And a lot of people, because of the glamour of money, you are putting your hard money into it. 
and I have the opportunity to pray for a family who placed 3.8 million and it went down the drain, collective money, down the drain. And they were about to die. I said, okay, I want to I want to get involved. What is the name of the company and what is going on? He said, Do you want to invest? I said, yes, I want to invest. How much are you going to invest? I said, one million. I said, you have one million, and then he, he now sent back to me, send me your phone number. And I said, see, if you were this guy, you would have known my number. All my students know my number. And I said to him, be careful. God will judge you. This is wickedness. It's evil, you know. And I wrote him back and I sent to him and then I blocked him. Because my student had already opened another account and said, please block this account, I'm no longer using it. A guy is on it. But these are people in our churches, they are called Peter, aren't you poor? Look, there are two proud who work with their hands, they say dirty work. Mm -hmm. No, I don't dirty work, uh, but they can say, Please give me. And you know what they can do next? They can do people. You are too proud to walk, but you become the duper. That's not God. And so the antidote for pride is what? It's a stone design, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who trusts will never be dismayed. I will make justice the measuring line and righteousness the front line. That's why Jesus said they will come to him. Justice and equity in our midst. Justice and equity amongst us as believers. But this, this, is, this, this is what people are not looking for. Somebody wants to be what? Faster, bigger, and better than what? Every other person. So it doesn't even matter if that young man to get back. Well, and that is happening in our society. It's no strange tale that you all know it in our society today that we have comforting people and they are standing in the pulpit and saying that they are preaching. But they are operating on our protect means, not biblical means. But the antidote here is what? Is the lonely Jesus. The stone that is what is, you know, built for you and myself. Jesus is the antidote to our pride. He shows us the way we can follow. And the way we need to follow is that of what? Righteousness and justice. Justice and righteousness. Let those two words not depart from you, young man. Let it not depart from you, young woman. If you are doing a particular thing that is not of God, then you are not doing right with God. If you have to do somebody as a Christian, then you are not being just. May God help us. And today we see all of these because people are proud. But come to Jesus. That's what the scripture is saying. In Zion, there is a sure foundation where you can find solace and rest. The next thing we see the prophet says is that look, if you don't repent, judgment is going to come. Judgment will what? Will come. And it's going to be what? It's going to be a terrible judgment. He, he begins to say it's going to be like a what? Like a weed? Like a what? Like a floor? And it will sweep everything in its path. You know, when you have to land uh, they are terrible, right? Everything along the path goes with it. Wind and what? And water. It can be more vicious than what? Than fire. And I tell you, God is saying, I will sweep it. But He says, I'm not going to do it all at once. I'm going to do it what? Little by little. Say, so morning, you wake up, you have a heavy wind that will carry your mattress and put it in another position. You go looking for it. Before you come back, your roof has gone in the afternoon. And before you think you are going to sleep in the night, 
The whole ground is flooded with water. You have nowhere to stand or to sleep or to even lie. God is going to pass judgment. And, and, and be assured of this. God's judgment is going to come upon all those people who do not believe in Him. God's judgment is going to come against every man and woman who is proud. You see, when we are proud, it's as if to say we crunch our face against God. Just imagine, who are you? The, 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 the writer will say, you are a dust. And here you are, you are a worm. And here you are, you want to challenge your wife. Your maker, your creator, you were made by God. And now you stand to say, I will do it. Nobody can stop me. When I say something, I do it. Who are you, Baba? God says, judgment will come. And let's be mindful how we walk along with our wife, our fellow human beings. Israel was told, you will be trampled on the food by the wife. But the Assyrians, verse 2 to 3, he says, you are going to be like a fake, that is why, that is right before harvest. You know, <laughs> you, 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 your, your, your judgment, that, that phrase there in, in, in verse 4, tells us that judgment will come quicker than you think. Quicker than you are, than you think. Some young people say, hey, I understand what to do, I'm taking my time, I will get there. But before you go, you are there sooner than you really realize. Destruction decreed against the world, against the whole land. Verse 21 and 22, God says explicitly, the whole land is going to go where? It's going to go on judgment. That is what it proud. But verse 20 is what gives me, you know, you know, the drama here today. Verse 20 says, the bed is too what? It's too what? Are you there? The bed is what? Too short. To what? To stretch out on. The blanket is what? Too narrow. To what? Rock around you. Hey, you know what the scripture says? It says, listen, no matter where you go, no matter what you do, God's judgment, no appeal. Some writer says, if you are guilty, who will set you free? And what God simply says to Israel here, judgment is sure to come. Whatever we do in this life, we will have the consequences. And let's be aware. Don't think you can grab God. Don't think you can run from God. And sometimes people believe that evil is gone in the night because God's eyes in the night is what? It's closed. Whatever evil you are doing, God what? God sees. And you know what? God sees and God is going to what? He's going to punish that evil. He's going to bring judgment. The scripture says in Psalm 10 verse 2, in his arrogance, the wicked man hurts, you know, hunts down the what? The weak who are caught in his king's devices. He boasts of the what? The cravings of his heart. He what? He blesses the what? The greedy and rewards the Lord. In his pride, the wicked does not seek him. In all his thoughts, there is no room for God. His ways are what? Always prosperous. He is haughty, and your laws are far from him. He snares at all his enemies. He says to himself, nothing will shake me. I will always be happy and never have trouble. His mouth is full of cursing and curses and lies and threats, trouble and evil are under his tongue. He lies in wait near the villages. From ambush he murders the what? The innocent, watching in, uh, watching in secret for his victim. He lies in wait like a lion in power. He lies in wait to catch the helpless. He catches the helpless and drags them off in his neck. His victims are crushed. They collapse. They fall under his strength. He says to himself, God has forgotten. 
He covers his eyes and he covers his face and never sees. Pride goes before destruction and all the spirit before a fall. God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. But I like what the Apostle John says. Do not be mistaken, my friends. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the craving of sinful man and the loss of his eyes, the loss of his eyes and the boasting of what he has and does come not from the Father, but from the world. The world and his desires pass away. But the man who does the will of the Lord, the will of God, lives forever. Hallelujah. That's our encouragement for you and myself. And today, we can say that if we know where we have gone astray from God, the good news is we need to return. So the sovereign Lord God Almighty knows exactly what to apply to our sin condition. God knows whether we need a stake, a plank, or a cow to uproot us or remove us from that evil. Whichever way may we be willing to allow God to speak to us and not have, you know, to use force to get us in line or on track. Amen. I pray that we can come to Jesus. So the question that we need to ask today is, what is your sin condition? Amen. What is your sin condition? Are you haughty before God? I want us to pray. Let's bow our heads. Search our lives. Search our hearts. What are you doing that God has said no? And you know it, but you are still there. You are trying to muscle up with God. You will really win that battle. It's a futile battle. I want you to give it up. I want you to give it up. What are you boasting about? What are you haughty about? <laughs> like Ephraim, what are you saying that I know nothing can happen? table today. Jesus died that we will find life. But there's not finding life, but we have it more abundantly. <coughs> Thank you for the cross. What is it that God is putting his hand and pointing his finger to in your life, can you give it up today that you have no regrets tomorrow? Can you trust him? It's a sure foundation. He will never fail. <laughs>